Hello there everybody and welcome to episode 3 of Tame Wild, the home of beasts. Today we are going to expand our city for real. We are also caging some rhinos which happen to be strolling around in the vicinity of our home. These bad boys are sitting in some cages and hopefully we are going to be able to do something with them. We have rhinos in cages, we have an elephant in the pasture, what can go possibly wrong? a lot so what will be up today is a very important task i want to set up the stone workers quarter however you want to call it so for that purpose we're going to set up a couple of stone worker bays and a lot of stockpiles there we go on a bonus side, this also yields us a lot of dolomite, and that's a stone that we definitely will see good use for. So, we're going to expand this into a storage hall and a quarry at the same time. The tame wild dwarves are new to this place, but we are already fetching ourselves really a lot of rare specimen. I feel like the rhinos that we got there need to go onto a separate pasture. But, well, it works on out brilliantly. So, let's see. We want wooden cages, and we want a lot of them. So, there we go. This area here is a good starting point for our creature collection but it is uh, by all means not a good ending point i am very very worried about the well-being of my war dogs as they seem to be constantly getting into a tussle with the rhinos but apart from that things are working out uh, quite good we have serpent people in the caverns below which is well not cool if you ask me but we'll see what we can do out of that. I personally, as a player of Dwarf Fortress, have not too much experience with animal handling whatsoever. I need to put this as a, as a, as a, as a disclaimer for this series, so this is a lot about me learning to handle animals as well in Dwarf Fortress. Okay, now then. It is time for the workshops. So we're going to stop working with any materials. We're not working with boulders. We're also not going to work with blocks, but we're working with bars. That's okay. Okay, now that uh, all of a sudden gives us not much to work with anymore. We don't have any blocks to work with, so let's... Uh, start with that problem right we have way too many projects for this fort so let's start with the blocks gorax the human pike master is visiting it's very interesting for me to see that gorax comes as a visitor i wonder if he's going to freelance again at our fort that would be good as gorax is an excellent fighter and has been Good company for our campaign since several episodes or several seasons he's been around since season one and if he ever should die i'd be feeling very bad about this so i want to make sure that we're not accidentally going to build uh these out of uh, nickel silver so let's work on that on the list here, we have Quartzite, Dolomite, Sandstone. So let's start putting up stockpiles for these. I always like to do that as soon as I can. Giving them some wheelbarrows. We don't have them yet, but we will. And... Putting up these stockpiles will make us faster eventually. It'll take a while though. So let's see. 
Zack Zool, the Weaver. Zack Zool Arrow Oars, a legendary Weaver. So, what about you? How long have you been with us, my dear lady? Oh, it's winter. Oh boy, we have nothing to trade with yet. Oh no, that's really bad. So, Zack Zool is a Sad Walls OG. Welcome. But I want to stick with the people of our main cast for today. So we are going to set up our trade depot down here, as this is no problem for anybody to arrive there. We can easily have... Wait a sec, is this any problem? Are we locked out from the outside world there? Yes, we are. So we need to open the... No, wait a sec. Ah, no, no. It's okay. It's A-OK. -okay. They can enter over this entrance there. All right. The war dog and the rhino is fighting. And yes, I am not looking uh, at these uh, notifications because I'm scared to look at them. Okay. So while the trade depot is being built, let's check out our dwarf of the day. So, for this one, we're going to go over to Kivish the Carpenter. Kivish Fainted Crafts is also our appraiser, so Kivish is absolutely the person that deserves the today's spotlight. Because you're going to be our trader, unless somebody is a better appraiser, but uh, I don't think so. So, Kivish. Kivish the Carpenter. She is... She does not participating in physical confrontations and she works to square this natural tendency with her respect of martial prowess. She often feels envious of others and she is quite ambitious. She doesn't seek out excitement and she is brave in the face of imminent danger. She is currently more fearless and she occasionally overindulges. She prefers that everyone live as harmoniously as possible and she can occasionally lose focus on the matter at hand. She tends to be a passive and uh, she tends to be passive in discussions and she has a very greedy streak. She often touches others during conversations when she's nervous. She scratches her nose when she's thinking. Okay. Okay. She likes anhydrite, tin, star sapphire. Oh, tin, that's really good. Star sapphire, that's a really rare one. Ember, the color cerulean, leather armor, grates, turkeys for their wettle and the sound of the lavender bells. When possible, she prefers to consume parsnip wine and peaches, and she absolutely detests bark scorpions. Who doesn't? So, Welcome, Kivish. You are now main cast. That means we're going to mourn her loss particularly, and we're going to look her life up regularly and be happy to see her in other fortresses. So, our fort here has hunger for iron and bronze. I also want to check on out what kind of pets we can import. So I was wondering if we can import elephants, but uh, obviously not. It is really weirding me out that my culture can't have elephants on the on the starting embark, but I can't import them on this area. That's uh, really 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 weirding me out let's see if there's any other category that i've been overlooking so far maybe there is the answer i'm looking for in the sections here that i haven't looked up yet i mean there is even caves giant cave spider venom cages so no we can only buy the empty cages and not the cages with their content miscellaneous things tools no it just uh no it just no well that is not really much of a big deal we are ordering iron and bronze nevertheless because that's just good stuff to 
trade with. Let's see if Kivish can actually do a first trade or not, because currently, well, we are not that uh, ready yet, I would say. All right. Look at them go. I like these uh, workshops being looking so they are looking so nicely uniform as and all. So let's deconstruct this stone workers workshop and let's start working on wheelbarrows. Cause that'll make everything faster. And faster is good for us. So another little stockpile over here for timber, because I feel like we can't really use that. So as it stands right now, um, we somehow have not constructed anything here. I bet that is because we have so many holding jobs right now at the... Oh, we have also so many crafting jobs, of course, of course. I mean, it doesn't matter that badly if we'd be unable to trade in this uh, year. But it'll also be quite uh, ridiculous if we didn't. Got rhinos to sell, you see. <laughs> but yeah, dwarves take the hauling very, very seriously. Let's see. What happens if we only put this on one dedicated hauler? Ah, look at that! Magic! All of a sudden things get built. <laughs> if everybody is inclined to haul, it is really, you notice that the workload, workload of the fort really dies off of that. You really do notice that. I don't know if the trade caravan is even able to enter anymore or if they just pissed off because there was no uh, trade depot to begin with. That could be very much the case. We'll be, we'll be monitoring this a little bit while we are expanding our business. Damn, this is so wonderful to see that we have so much tin. We are going to be able to do such great things here. This will be a, such a nice looking fort at the end of this. I am planning to work a lot with metal this time, you see. All right, so we have only a couple of yellow zircons, which I don't dare to give away, as if anybody of ours decides to go for an artifact crafting spree, we'd be done for. So, no, we're going to bring our mugs. Bring all the mugs, because we're just going to make new ones. Yes, it's a very simple thing. We can sell the mugs, though, and buy some specific prior priority goods. There will be surely something that the Dwarfs of Tamehold can use. So, well, then teeving or mischievous creatures. Oh god, it's giant! Chaos. <clears throat> Sorry, I I had a certain I had a sudden lapse of concentration. Good thing that we have all that stuff on the ground, because these nasty critters they would steal everything. So probably we can. There's a fair chance that we get some of these into our cages. <laughs> um. Yeah. Well, I'm getting ahead of myself. So, we're going to be buying here, in this situation, meat. Is it uh, a little bit much, in a, isn't it? Uh? Well, let's see. If I pick up all the meat, all our goblets are worth way more than that. So, we're in the mug business. I really got to think about what kind of uh, what kind of economy Tame Wild will have. I mean, at the end of the day, these guys are going to have a lot of animal pro produce, so I don't know how we're going to handle that. I just know that we have now a really decent stockpile of things that we can turn into food which is extremely valuable. I hope our, our dudes are going to be able to transport that away in time. We only have a dozen of dwarves, therefore I need to be a little bit uh, careful 
around the amount of jobs that I issue. As you see here, these workshops, they attract lots of work, obviously. But they also keep a lot of people busy here. Why is he unconscious? Well, don't know. I merely do know that it is time to put down some more beds. We do require more bedrooms. Somebody's unconscious on the floor. That might be because they haven't had a place to sleep at. I mean, currently, the fort is in a very, very chaotic state. There's obviously still so much more that needs to get done, but, uh... It is always like that in the early days of Fort. But we have now something around 20 bedrooms, and we have new arrivals, which uh, sadly have hit town so fast that I wasn't able to see. So I am very surprised to see that Ano Zaxul's wife is also with him. Alright, never mind. Never mind that thought. So, yeah, I can only see that. So I think Nish and Kogan are new. I can't remember any fish, fisher dwarves that I had. So let's see. Oh, yeah, Nish the metal crafter, originating from the Lone Anvil has been with the Emerald Gorge and the, uh, wow, there are a lot of OG people here. I'm very, very happy to see that. We have really, really interesting people re uh, hitting town here. So, the rhinos that we got here, I don't, I, I won't put them on the same pasture as my war animals. We will have to dig out new things there. Unip, the doctor, is visiting. This is so cool. They aren't migrating anymore, all of them. They are partially just coming on by for a visit. Fare thee well, my friends. I'm very sad that we haven't had anything to, to trade with you, friends. But, well, time will come. So, I'd say another thing that I want to work on today is I want to have my first steps into the whole magma reservoir business. So let's work on that. The giant chaos are really, really uh, making me nervous. But well, it is what it is, I'd say. Maybe the tamed wildians will be the people who will be finally taming these creatures. That would be so awesome. But I mean, as far as I know, everything in this game can be domesticated. As far as I know. I, I really don't know if I'm right about that, but uh, well. So currently, what's stressing out my situation here so much is that we have a lot of uh, jobs down at the stone workers' workshops, and the stones that they are supposed to work with are not on the um, stockpiles. Therefore, we have just a lot of uh, hauling happening. Slow, tedious, inefficient hauling because they will just uh, bring the quartzite block from the quarry. Does take a while though. But I let them, you know. It's a lot of work to uh, get your dwarves off of their tomfoolish tom ways, so you don't really want to make things more difficult than they already are. 
So we're going to send our harvesters another round out there. And I want to create now a extra a extra new pasture here, the first of many. So let's do that like that. I mean eventually we will be uh We will be eventually segmenting these, so building walls in there and uh, changing up things like that. We can divide this big hall into many pastures, we can build rooms in there. There's a lot of things how we can do that, but the most important thing is that I want to have these rhinos somewhere else. That's really important for me. Okay, I mean, that's probably the coolest animal that could have roamed into our early game traps ever. Pack of uh, freaking rhinos, you see. Alright, so we have the tavern here, but the tavern doesn't properly tavern without drinks and a chest in there. So, let's activate drinks and let them be carried from there to there. I mean, our stockpiles are low, but as you can see here, they're still brewing and things are still moving forward. This will be good enough for us until our city hits like a hundred people or so. I think from that point on, stuff will be, will be not working anymore then we will be needing to expand into other areas of business, but that is okay. Let's use Dolomite for now. So... Why is a rhino fighting down here with a war dog? Why is a rhino down here? This is a bad, 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 bad situation, my friends. So... Okay. How did the freaking rhino get down here? This is, uh... Seriously bad news. I mean, we have fighters that are technically capable of doing this. But practically, I got no clue. So, yeah, we, we got a rhino in the base. Emergency. I mean, that's probably the last thing you would ever want to have. A freaking rhinoceros down in a dwarven citadel. But that's where we are at right now. This is uh, a, a situation that I didn't expect to find myself into. So... Well, the good thing is the Rhino is more scared of us than anything else, so at least the feeling is mutual. We got also Gorax, which happens to be a legendary fighter, so if the worst things happen, I think this guy can solo the beast. I think he can. I have no clue. Jeez, that's making me so nervous to see that thing prancing around. I mean, this ought to be a problem eventually. So let's uh, see. I need to set up mechanisms. Now that we got quartzite, we can totally um, use that. Ugh. find that it's always a pain <laughs> okay using quartzite because it's a magma proof uh, material it's always good to have magma proof materials and well the 
only thing that I can think of is to set up traps where this thing is right now roaming and hope and pray to our mock that eventually it'll run into one of these because that's really the only thing that I can think of. I mean, the, the rhino is running through bedrooms, temples. But at least I have learned now that war animals need to be contained like that. So having a war animal is not necessarily only a good thing. It also means that you have now animals that are going to kill stuff whenever they can. That's also what I learned about war animals. So let's just hope that the rhino will be going into one of those traps up there instead of uh, killing somebody. It killed the dog already, but uh, well, let's see what that'll do. I'm just hoping that it's going to meander up there to the uh, to the other traps. Almost there, big boy. You're almost in safety. He dodged it in another time. <laughs> God. The thing is, if this rhino ever collides with a dwarf and uh, they decide to be in a bad mood together, then this will ex result in an explosion of gore and body parts. And the plot twist is that it's not going to be the body parts of the rhino. So, but we are, uh, we're, we're getting there. We're sealing off the, uh, the ways of the beast. And, well, he's in the dining room, room again. Almost. Yeah! That is uh, probably one of the weirdest things that came together in my forts ever. bad thing is I just can't stop watching it because I'm very very scared that somebody will die. So yeah, Gorex shared some rumors. <laughs> cool stuff. So well, let's just uh, do our thing I suppose. Oh, this is scaring me. But I mean the good part is that they are we have now brought up more and more of the traps, so eventually the rhino should be... Oh, okay. Okay. Good. So I feel so much safer now, and we have to think about where are we going to position cage traps strategically if something like that happens again because I don't want to be in that situation ever again so we're going to set up cage traps for for the animals that happen to be strolling around I mean this place is full of right there are so many of them they keep just coming and coming get that we already have so many cage of them, and uh, they just keep coming. Anyway, so, my friends, end of today's episode. I haven't managed to get down as far as I wanted to in terms of the magma reservoir, but, I mean, we are obviously on our best way to be professional rhino keepers, obviously. These are not the worst animals to uh, to try to um, domesticate. Not at all. They, they I'd assume that they are quite badass. So, <laughs> yeah. Leave me your comments down below, my friends. I think uh, Tame Wild has already quite a good start for itself going, and I'm very very eager to see where our Rhino um, Meadow will lead us. Until then. Leave me a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and of course, check out the description box. There's plenty of links to the rest of the uh, saga here. Two fortresses in this playlist already, and you can also check out 
the links to Discord and to Twitch where I do stream regularly and of course if you'd be so kind to check out the support links I'd be more than grateful. A big big thanks to all the supporters of Icon Gaming at the same time I wanted to say a big thanks to you watching this video right here right now. Appreciate having you and see you all on the next one. Bye bye.